Mm, light work, light work, light work. Mic check. Big up to everyone inside the building already, man. It's the Liverpool game, man. It's the Liverpool preview. It's Liverpool Palace. We go again. Um, I know, man. Have you guys recovered yet? Let me know in the chat, man. 3-0 still. You know, I woke up the next day after the result and I promise you, but I couldn't believe it. You know, the first thing I did, I was like, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Oh, lost 3-0. And, but I didn't lay room my day. I just carried on with it, got on with it. It is what it is. Um, stayed off of the social, so I couldn't see what anyone else was was saying. But big up to everyone, as I said, inside, man. Guys, remember, like the video, share the video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to it as well, man. Got some great content, as always. Um, but we're here to talk about Palace. We're here to talk about Liverpool, man. We go again. We've got seven more finals to play in the Premier League. We still sit. Second on goal difference, but joint on points with Arsenal. Obviously, Man City are a point behind us. It's going to be a long one, man. After seeing, like, we haven't been underperforming. <sighs> say we haven't been underperforming, but, yeah, I don't know, man. The team just, you know, the cohesion of the team ain't working at the moment, man. Um, we just keep missing chances. Like, performance, we're, we're, we create a lot of opportunities, but we're just not. I don't know, man. Oh no, bro. Team just feels team just feels a bit off. Just feels a bit off. I don't I, I can't put a finger on it. Yes, it could be just down to missing opportunities. It could just be could you I don't know, man. It could be the clock thing, you know, it could it could be so many different things, man, but we just keep missing chances in games, bro. And it's it's now becoming a problem because before even though we was missing chances, we were still scoring goals. So you would like, oh, I can forget about that. Oh, don't worry about that one. It's fine. We already scored two or three goals in the, in in there, but it's 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 mad at the moment, man. But we got Palace again at home, man. Atlanta. Obviously, we lost three 0 to them. So it's a reset now. It's a reset. We go again in terms of from a point standpoint, from a, a win streak standpoint. We just go again. Um, but looking at our past results against Palace, we haven't done bad. You know, we used to struggle against them. They used to be our bogey team. You know, obviously, you guys remember the 3 3 when it was, what, 3 0 up and threw the game away, you'd say. You know what I mean? There's a certain there's a certain striker, man. Hopefully, soon, man, I'll get him on the channel so we can have a conversation about that. Um, but there was a certain striker that haunted us on that day. Um, but since then, man, we've been smoking them, to be fair, like fours and sevens and not, what was it, a nine we gave them? What, like, like we, have been, we have been scoring a lot of goals past them. Um, and their results haven't been great either in the Premier League in terms of they've been inconsistent. But let's go and have a quick look where they are, are in the league. Hopefully everyone can see that. Yeah, make it a bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So from a from a Premier League standpoint, obviously Arsenal still top, but we joined on points with them, man. Um, in terms of informed teams in the Premier League at the moment, you know Arsenal are four wins and, and and a draw, and we're on three wins and two draws. Um, man City closely following with their three wins and two draws as well. Um, so form wise, there's three teams that's top of the table at the moment, or three teams that's fighting for this Premier League title. Um, they've not they've not been out of form as sort so. We're back to Premier League now, so let's see what, what kind of happens. Obviously, Spurs there, but then we go down to look at who we're playing. Palace, 31 games this season so far, seven wins, nine draws and 15 losses. They don't score a lot of goals, 36 goals, but they've conceded 54, which puts them on a minus 18 goal difference. They haven't won a game in their last five. So if we don't, yeah, man. We don't get the result against them now, but I don't know when we will. Um, we have to get a result against them. Let me go and look quickly look at um, their their results of recent. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hopefully, you guys can see that I'll make it. I was going to say something outrageous then, but I won't, I won't say what I was about to say. So, obviously, Man City beat them 4-2 in their last Premier League game. They lost to Bournemouth 1-0. 1-1 against Forest. Um, obviously, they played in a, a. It looks like a friendly. I don't know if it was a. Don't know if they're in any, any other competition. Must have been a friendly. Um, then they played Luton one-one. Spurs beat them three-one. They actually played good against Spurs. To be fair, um, 
But yeah, um, then they beat uh, Burnley 3 0. Obviously, Burnley had a player sent off 1 1 against Palace, 3 1 against Chelsea. And we know how inconsistent Chelsea can be as well. Um, then they got small by Brighton 4 1. And then they beat Sheffield as well. The teams that they should be beating Arsenal obviously smoked them 5 0. And then obviously, they lost to Everton in that replay. But they, they haven't been consistent at all, man. They concede, they pretty much concede a goal in every game they play. Um, so and we tend to score. It's crazy that we didn't actually score at home um, when we played in the, in the Europa League. But this should not be a difficult game at all. Like in in my opinion, it shouldn't be. But it's Liverpool Football Club, man, and we always make things difficult for ourselves. But yeah, this should not be a difficult game at all, man. Um, I was listening to like Klopp after the game when we played Atalanta, and then he sort of they asked him a question around obviously Curtis and. It just about obviously you could see that he wasn't fit as well after like 20 minutes he, he wasn't up to speed and but that's fine he's been out for for ages as well and obviously Trent wasn't ready to play any minutes yet um and then obviously Jota came on played what 20 20 minutes I think it was so yes yeah, we're getting some of the boys back Allison isn't isn't ready yet but I don't know if will he be ready for this one um hopefully he's ready soon man because it's not that Kelleher hasn't done his part and helped us in terms of what we've been doing, you know, since he's been out. And Alisson's been out for, what, two, maybe two and a half months now. It's just the, um, you get a, a leader back as well in Alisson. Um, you get a leader back and obviously you get a world-class goalkeeper back as well. But the leadership quality there to help us through certain games. Um, and to be fair, Kelleher's probably played the same amount of, you know, same amount of games, I think it is, um, as um, Alisson. So, but yeah, man, getting Allison back, it helps. Getting Trent back on the football pitch as well helps massively, man. You know, his creativity as well. And then obviously, because he's the vice captain, he's in the leadership group, his leadership as well. We're going to need all the, the senior, the leaders um, to kind of get us out of whatever the rot we're in at the moment. It's not even like a bad rot. It's just an in front of goal rot that we're having at the moment, man. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird what we're doing at the moment. Um. Jota back as well. He's the saviour, the Lord and saviour, they say. Um, so he's going to come back and obviously score loads of goals. Let's hope. Um, and just seeing him, you know, that 20 minutes he played, man, you could see already as soon as he got the ball, you can see he's so direct. Um, he's both footed, we know. He's good in the air. He was in the box as well. And there was a, you know, he he had, what, two headers in the game where you like, could have probably done better with him. But just being in the right, you know, right spaces massively helped us um, where we weren't seeing that. Um, throughout the game um, <clears throat> and then maybe that helps take some of the pressure off some of the boys in the in the, in the team I want to see Cody as well because Cody played really well in my opinion I know there was a few people that said he wasn't good and and obviously the major I think it was majority said he was good it was just a few that didn't think he was good and I don't know he was strong he was aggressive you know he was on the front foot when we was giving him the ball he was taking it he was carrying us forward he was creating opportunities but it just felt it felt like you know, that's the Cody that I know of. That's the Cody that most of the supporters that knows him. That's what we've been needing from you, bro. That, but we need that on a consistent basis. <clears throat> we need that from a consistent basis, bro. It can't just be a one-off game. But we need you to play exactly like that all the time. Um, but I don't know if there's a correlation when he plays in the position he prefers, he performs. I, mean, I don't have the numbers or the data to check that, but I might, might do just to see. But when he plays on that left side, I feel like he... Is, I don't know if it's the he does the natural thing, but he just or his confidence is there. But I don't know. But I've seen him play so much better when he plays on the left than when he he plays maybe on the right or he fills in through the middle. Um, but he was really good in my opinion. So for me, I'd probably give him the start in this one as well. But when we get to the team, I'll I'll chop that up, man. For Palace as well, man. Obviously, they've got Elise, they've got um, Eze. Those are the kind of guys. They got Mateta up top. He, you know, strong, aggressive. He can run in behind. Um, but those are kind of the key players. I think they they can offer them something. The others, I'm not really fussed about. Um, obviously, you got Anderson at the back as well. Um, he's a good defender. Range of passing is there. But they, they're conceding goals, and I know it doesn't look like a lot because apart from Man City, obviously they lost. They conceded four goals. But if you look at their past, what, three of four of the games or maybe even, yeah, three of the games, it's all been one goal. 
So it's not like they, they're shipping in a massive amount of goals. They're just shipping in the one goal, the odd goal, the odd goal, the odd goal. And then you go to the Spurs one. And in that game, they created enough chances as well. Um, but yeah, man, it's crazy. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Um, big up honesty in the building, man. Big up, man. Big up Savage as well. Big up the wizard in the chat and some of the muggles <laughs> to uh, Marie as well. Big up to you. Um, let's see. Jones in the building. So, well, can't play this game. He has been dead, unfortunately. That's another conversation we can definitely, definitely have. Angel in the building as well. Big up to you, man. Spiritual in the building. Palace will smoke Liverpool. Jesus. Are you a Liverpool fan or you're not? Let me know. Red or dead, big up. Enjoy your weekend ends. Yeah, man, big up, man. Big up every time. Everyone, enjoy the show. Big up, real. Um, hold on a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Who, who put Savage on the timeout? What's going Yo, Mods, what are we doing here, bro? What are we doing there? You put, I'll put Savage on the timeout, bro. What's this? That's crazy. Yo, that's mad still. But yeah, with Palace, man, they, listen, they're not being conceding a mad amount of goals, but they are shipping in goals in every game. So let's see what happens, man. Um, yeah, nah, man, unfortunately, bro, we need we need the three points. There's no like, you know, sometimes you go into games, you're like, oh, I call a draw would be cool here. There is no draws now in the Premier We can't draw any more games. A Man United one was enough. We have to win every game now if we want to win this Premier League. It has to just be done. It has to be three points. And because if we don't win our games, you know that Man City, you know that Arsenal, because of the form they're in, and they've come on form at the right time, to be fair. They're, you know, we were the one in form for, our, you know, start of January, we were just cooking teams, score, you know, we're scoring goals, whatever, whatever. But now Arsenal and that, since they had the little Dubai break, they, they, I don't know, man. They're just looking, they're looking good, man. Defensively as well. They look the most balanced in the Prem at the moment on form. Defensively, they look strong. They're not shifting any goals really. And then they're scoring goals. They're finding a way to get these goals now as well. Um, and then Man City do what Man City does, man. They just, just quietly go about doing their work. Um, they play before all of us as well. So that means they could be top of the table. By the end of the weekend, they could actually just be top. If Liverpool drop points and if Arsenal drop points, um, Man City could be top by the end of the weekend, which is crazy. Um, and it goes for all of us, to be fair. If Man City and Ars if Man, Man City and, and Liverpool drop points, Arsenal can stay top. If you know Man City and Arsenal drop points and Liverpool win, we can go top. So by the end of the weekend, we could see another shift as well. We could see another shift between the three teams as well. Um um, but, you know, obviously the rivals, obviously we want them to drop points. We need Man City and we need Arsenal to drop points, but we have to obviously get our work done and our job done as well. Um, but yeah, now, nah, man, it's an interesting Premier League at the moment. Seven more games. The games are, you know, dropping off thick and fast as well. So, um, you know, we remember when we had 10 games to go. We remember when we had 15 to go and now we're down to the, the seven. And by the end of the weekend, we, we're going to have six games left. Um, and all three of them, are, we, we got away. Um, we've got Wolves at home. Where well, we got Everton, West Ham and Fulham. That's the three away games. And that's the crucial ones as well, because their teams, West Ham are like a hot and cold team. They, you know, they can get points, you know, here or there. They can, they can cause us trouble, but we should win that game. And the Fulham one, obviously, we played them, what, three times already? We played them twice in the Carabao Cup semifinals. Um and we played them, what, in the Premier League once already. So we played them three times already. This will be the fourth time. Um, and we not the, the one that we played against them at Anfield we weren't a struggle. But we scored, We had to score some special goals that day. And they, I don't know, they were just clinical. I'll give them that. They were clinical. And But the two games that we played them in the Carabao Cup semi-finals, they created enough chances to put us away as well in that one, Brian. They were just missing... Um, a better decision making from um, uh, what's his name, the, the ex Man United player. His name slipped my mind, but but the better decision from him when he could have squared it up against us for them to go two nil up. Pereira, that's the name. Um, yeah, better decision could have put them two nil up against us in that in that cup game, but you know it, it happens sometimes. Um, but yeah, man, that's going to be a difficult one as well. 
And then the Everton game, man, we should smoke them, man. We should just smoke them. But we know they're going to come with the, the, you know, with that low block and they're going to make it difficult because obviously they don't want us to win the Premier League and they're going to want to take a scalp and out of us as well. They just want to, you know, make the game street and they're going to be aggressive. So you, there's going to be a lot of tackles flying in. So normally when we play them, we, we come out with injuries, man. And it's, it's a long, it's a long day, man. But those are kind of the difficult ones. The home ones should take care of themselves. The home ones should 100, 100% take care of themselves, man. But let's get it, man. Let's get to let's get to this team so we can get out of here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let's get that. Let me know if you guys can see it. Should be able to see it. It's not too, it's not too bad, I think. All right, man. Um, there's nothing much we can do about the goal, the goalkeeper situation, unless because obviously Klopp said Allison isn't ready yet. I don't know how long it's gonna take for him to be ready. Um, but hopefully, hopefully soon. But obviously, it's going to be Kelleher that carries on in goal, in my opinion. Um, he's, he was a, he was really good in the game against Atalanta, to be fair, yeah. But it's just that the first chance where he just went underneath him, you're like, come on, bro, gather that. And then, you know, in that in that moment, sometimes you think Alisson would just gather that and we'll just be on the counter-attack, probably throws it out wide and, and we go. But... You know, the other two saves he made, one with his side of his face, which was crazy. And then the other one when he came out, when it was, what was it, 1-0 at the time, he came out and smothered it. Um, he smothered it as well to make the save there. And then even when they had the third one, he probably could have pushed it a bit further away. Um, but he made a good save 1v1 again. And, you know, the, the, the midfielder was on hand to, to tap it in for the third for their third goal. But he made some really good save in the game, and his passing wasn't wasn't bad at all in the game. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Um, it was slow at times, but I guess that's the, that's just the way that we have been playing, man. Which is it is what it is, kind of thing. We try and play out from the back now. We, we keep it simple. We try and drag the team onto us, and then we can pick holes in, in you know and spaces between the lines when we are playing. Uh, but yeah, he stays in goal. Um, Gomez obviously played right back, but I think Bradley obviously comes back in for this one. Um, there was a lot of shouts, man, for people saying Gomez wasn't he wasn't playing well. It's like he looks better at left back, uh, X, Y, and Z. Yeah, he didn't have the best of games, um, but he wasn't bad, bad. It was just, I know, it, it just, I don't know, maybe over trying. Maybe he was just over trying. I don't know, man. He was just... He was just shooting from 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 every time he got the ball. The plot went mad. The players around him went mad when he when he shot from what was it thirty five yards? They showed. It's like, bro, just recycle it. Go back out to um Sobo. Let him put it back in the box. But yeah, it, it just wasn't his best game. But the 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 reaction from there is just like, nah, he's not good, man. He's blah blah blah. I said he's had more good games and he's had bad games this season. It could have just been one of those games. And it wasn't like he was the only one in the team playing bad. Pretty much 95% of the team was dreadful in the game, man. It's dreadful, dreadful, dreadful. Um, but yeah, man, it's crazy. So Bradley will be back in. He gives us that with, you know, I mean, the up and down, the energy from the kid as well. Um, so And he's had a, a good rest because he's played countless a number of games now, to be fair. Um, so that, that you know, obviously having, having a, what is it, a week, you'd say now off? Trained, obviously, played on the weekend. Yeah, so we'll have a week off. Hopefully, recharge, ready to go, man. So, we, you know, the energy is there for him to kind of cook up and down that right-hand side. And then we go left-back. Um, obviously, it has to be Robertson. Um, he'll come back in. When he came on the pitch, man, the energy levels from this guy, man, he looked really, really good when he came on. Um, Simikash, you had the opportunity there, bro. Can't even lie, man. You had the opportunity to take... Um, you haven't played in ages. I know sometimes you need a bit of rhythm. and um, But yeah, you just didn't take the opportunity there, bro. Didn't take the opportunity, man. And you should have. You should have because, you know, when I'm calling for you to play and I'm like, bro, you're on the bench and Gomez is playing left back. And I'm like, bro, like play your left back, in it. Like, why is Gomez playing there? But you, now you get the opportunity to show. You don't show up, bro. So now I can... So, I'm not going to say I see the reason why the manager would pick him over because I still believe you still need, you obviously still need a bit of rhythm and you still need to to, to play games to get into your form. Um, and which he was when Robbo was injured, to be fair. 
Um, but yeah, he was, I don't know what Robo, um, what Simicast was doing in the game. Every pass was backwards. <laughs> he just looked, bro, he just looked so nervous, man. But Robo comes back in. So for when people are saying sell Robo, man, yeah, we can't sell Robo. Because if you're going to sell Robo, you sell Simicast, that means we need two left backs. I don't know, man. But yeah, now Robo has to stay. Um, Virgil, Virgil van Dijk, man. Um, I was on, I was on a podcast after obviously we lost the game, and it's crazy because I agreed to do it before I thought we was gonna lose, and they were just trying to cook Virgil, man. I'm like, bro, like one game doesn't define. He's been immense. He's been outstanding all season, but in this particular game, yeah, man, Virgil was chilling, bro. I don't know if man burned some weed before. I, I, I honestly don't know. Like I've not, I've seen him chilled like in games where he's like slight work, easy, I'll make the tackle, play it off simple, light header, simple stuff. But this one, it just felt like he was in hot. You know, when players, when we've got the final game of the Premier League, there's nothing to play for. And players are like, bro, manager, you don't need to pick me, man. I don't need to play in this game. That's the way he was playing. That's the way he was playing in this one, man. And then likewise, the his bro next to him, man, um, his bro next to him, Ibu. These two man was ah, bro, I don't know what the, these two was doing. These man was they were on next stuff, man. I don't know what conversation they had before, but they were on they were on the next stuff. The only excuse I'd probably I would say excuse because I know everyone's gonna be like, no, you can't make excuses. The only issue that I think I made it, you know, what I mean, Ibu just come back from injury. Kwanzaa's been playing, I'm playing, man. Nah, they were just bad, they were just bad. Um. Let me just go back to some of these comments quickly before I carry on with the team, see what you guys are saying. Uh, sell Simicas, um, keep Robbo. Um, he was absolutely awful. Uh, it was Klopp's fault, mostly, but Atalanta game. Jesus, why are we, well, hold on a minute, bro. What did Klopp do wrong in that one? And he said, not the tactical adjustments. I'll give you that if that's what you're saying. But he did He did try. He did try at halftime. He, he, you know what I mean? He made some substitutions to... To adjust the game where you thought we were going bad. Uh, Grand Robbo um, has to stay still quality and important um, for the dressing room. Uh, where was that one? Let's go back up. Good goalkeeper. Now he's a good goalkeeper, man. Uh, what's that? Um, all really must be fun supporting them. Good chance. Cheerleading and living. Eagle should. Oh, okay, you're talking, you're having a combo and that. All right, yeah, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's, um, let's go down, see you again. Um, big up, Miami, for sub, um, subscribing to the channel, man. Love for the love, man. Love for the love. Uh, Virgil delegated into the words of, yeah, bro, this man, this man was just chilling, bro. I don't know what was going on. He was just chilling. He was just chilling, man. He was chilling. Um, where are we go? Did you block someone? No. Hollywood Rock. Did you block someone? Yeah, right. Bro, stop blocking people, man. Right. That's I'm just out here blocking people, bro. No one's saying that I'm crazy. Dan's played the last night and he won't be there, man. Um, good goal though. Um, little back heel. Yeah, strong. He was strong, aggressive in that one as well. Um, but yeah, nah, man. It's <sighs> Let's see, let's see. All right, so so far, Kelleher, Bradley, Canate, Virgil, Robbo. Uh, in the six, the other guy that's been playing in the six, yeah, the uh, Motaru Donny. Bro, I've seen people cook this man online now, you know. He hasn't had, I think mean, it was like two games. Is it two games he hasn't he hasn't played well for? Is it two games only or is it more than two games? Uh, big up, John. Is it only two games? But yeah, people are just not having it, bro. They're just literally cooking him, saying he's not good enough, he's this, he's that, blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, nah, man, this is this is crazy. But he has looked a bit leggy, man. He did have a break, though, didn't he? Didn't he not... Was it the game before the United game? He had... um, He was off? He had a little... um, A little rest period, or was it a knock and then he didn't play? Yeah, I swear he had a little rest, though, man. Um... Yeah, nah, it's crazy, man. Wataru just looked tired. He, um, it's one and a half games, United and Atalanta. Uh, big up to Liz as well in the building. 
Um, uh, because he um, lacked pace when he has off off game and he looks really bad. Yeah, he ain't got the speed though. He's got the he got the brain though. He got the brain. He always picks up the right positions and stuff like that. Um, we got up Steph in the building as well. Uh, I mean, do we actually? Whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, do we need an actual six? But he's um, um stopgap, not so not that deep. Uh, you do need a six though. Definitely need a six. I think it frees up the other players. But to be fair, I don't know in it because obviously Klopp's leaving. So if Klopp was staying, I would say yes. And it's not because Watara has been poor. I just think that's a position they would probably look at anyway. Um, but because we're getting a new manager, I, I don't know if that's going to be on the list of players that they look at and probably getting in because the formation and system will change. Do You know what I mean? We'll just play with two midfielders, won't we? So just have to kind of wait and see for that one. Does Wataru play for you guys, though? Or do, would you put someone else in? Um, would you put someone else in? Would you put McAllister in that role? Or would you put Wataru in that role? I don't know. I don't know. I want to play Wataru, but he has had a few, well, what Savage said, to be fair, one and a half games. Um, but I don't want it to be... I don't want it to keep going because then you know when people, you know our fan base is at the moment, man. As soon as a player has one bad game, he's been poor all season. So I don't know. If we take him out for it for for this one. Do we need him for this one? I'm trying to think centrally. They don't really have anyone apart from Eze. But Eze will cook most of the players, man. If he's on it on the day, bro, he's a problem. Um, what are you saying? Put Matt there. The Setich. Uh, he looked good as well when he played the other night, man. Look really good, man. I was just bullying everyone. He looked big. Pause. He looked taller than everyone else on that pitch as well. Um, but yeah, man. All right, let's. It's, it's gonna be Watara in it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Watara. I can't see us not playing him in this one. Um, came off <clears throat> in the last game as well, so he should be. He should be ready to go for this one. Um, McAllister will go in. On this side, and not Bettinia McAllister. He's been really, really good for us as well since he's moving into the eight position. Um, I don't know. Are we overusing him now? I know that's going to be a question eventually. Is McAllister being overplayed? Blah 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 blah. Bro, he just has to play every game um, that we play. But I would put him there. Um, obviously, Curtis started in, in the last game, but. He, he looked leggy and Klopp mentioned it after 20 minutes. You could see that he wasn't fit. Um, and he said, like, obviously he was one of our fittest players, if not the fittest player before um, he got injured. But he got injured. So obviously he has to build his fitness levels back again. And I don't know if he's going to be, if he wasn't ready for Atalanta, will he be ready for the Palace game? Probably not. So I'd probably say shift him back to the bench and then wait and see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wait and see if you can, you know, you can bring him back in, give him some more minutes to build that fitness level um, back for him. So, yeah, I'd put McAllister in there. And then this side, man, this is the side that's been the problem as well. Do you know what? I'll actually do this, you know. I'll act, you know what I'm going to go? I'm going to give Graven Birch the run here. I'm going to give Graven Birch the run. Let's move, move you here. Put, Gra put Mac here and then put Graven Birch here. I'll give Graven Birch a run against these guys. I'm going to give him the run against these guys. I see your point there, Alexander, as well. Put Elliot um, right mid there. Um, but he got his opportunity as well. And I'm not saying he had a bad game, but he didn't take the start either, bro. He didn't take the opportunity when he started. And yes, it was an overall team thing and you can't blame one player. But like the energy that I gave to Simicas, I have to give that same energy to Elliot as well. People have been calling for you to start. We've been calling for you to play your games because you have been really good when you've come off the bench. But you did get subbed off at half time. And if Klopp thought you were doing well enough, I'm sure he would have moved you into the midfield and then put Salah on anyway. But I don't know. That's the same energy you have to give him. 
you have your opportunity, you got to take it. If you don't take the opportunity, you have to wait for the next one. Maybe he's just, and I'm not saying that's going to be his whole career, but maybe he's just a substitution player for now. And then when we got the new manager with a new style, with a new system, we'll find the best solution for him. But at the moment, for me personally, you had your opportunity. Did you take it? No. You got sobbed off at half time as well. And as I said, if it wasn't a point where it was your problem or your fault, then they would have moved you into the midfield area and then you would have put then you would have put um Salah on anyway. Um so yeah man. Uh no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um let's see what you guys are saying for that one. See so, yeah, obviously Newcastle winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we saying? Isak instead of Nunes now, yeah? That the one. I see most of you said Elliot to play. Fair enough. Mohamed said, Grab versus look awful against Sheffield Palace are more physical. Um, it depends, bro. If you carry on, if you keep a narrative in mind, we always look for the bad things in players instead of the good things that they do. Um, and that's one thing I definitely try not to do. Um, if you have a narrative, you're always going to look for the bad things. Instead of you going, actually, no, he was really good with his passing. He was really good in the transition of play. He was, he was making tackles. He was doing certain things. But then, yeah, if you look at every time you lose, if someone tackles you and you lose the ball or whatever it may be, you lose a draw, then you'll be like, there you go again. And then you, that overshadows all the other things that you do in the game. So I'm not saying he had a great game, but it wasn't an awful game. It's just how what people are looking for now. So as soon as a player loses a, a draw, and that's what I knew again for, for Cody in the game, the last game, if Cody would have lost the draw in that game, they would have said he was awful. He lost one. The rest of the time he won and he was aggressive and he was he was running, he was taking players on, he was going by them. Nothing happened. No one, no one had nothing to say then. Um his passing wasn't good. He had a he had a high passing accuracy in the game. It depends on what type of passing you're looking for. If you're looking for, remember, Sheffield play with a low block. I don't know where you want these passes to go. Most of the passes are always going to be side to side and backwards, unless you're trying to play between the lines. So it just depends on what you're looking for. It all depends on what you're looking for. Um, some fans want um, Ange to replace Klopp. Yeah, that's mad still, mad, mad, mad. But yeah, I think he deserves to get an opportunity either on play and play, man. we got a squad. we got to utilise it. Um, Curtis is, is back, but he's not fit. So we have to take our time with him. We're saying Sobo isn't, is not performing. So he needs to be on the bench then, right? And then you've got Elliot. He's the other midfielder you could possibly start. But he had the opportunity to start and he got sobbed off at half time. So why not give it to the next man? And then it, it's down to him then. If he doesn't perform, Gravenberch doesn't perform, then you move it and you rotate and you keep going. To, do you know what I mean? Give the people the opportunity and then if they fail, then it is what it is. But the, Sobo's had the opportunity, didn't work, didn't play well. It wasn't bad, but he didn't play well. Elliot had the opportunity, didn't play well. Curtis, come on, you can see he's not fit yet. So are we going to keep, are we going to play Curtis again? He's not fit. So 20 minutes, 30 minutes into the game, looks leggy again. We're going to have to, then we'll, what's the point? Do you understand? That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to say. So let's see if this could work and, and then we can go from there. Um, Lucho obviously will, uh, Lucho will come back in, but I would rather give Cody this game. That's who I would start. I'm going to start Cody again over on that left-hand side. I thought he was really good against Atalanta. And then when Liverpool stopped using him, that's when we looked bad. When we was using him, it, we looked aggressive. We looked like we was going to create opportunities. We looked like we can... Because when he got the ball, he was the only one taking the ball under pressure, turning and carrying the ball forward for us. So, yeah, definitely, definitely give him the start. For me, he has to. Um, then you've got the conundrum now. Diaz has been performing all season, not all season, but he's been in he's been in a better form. I would say in the last couple of months, he's starting to see the old Lucho now. Um, Jota is back. Looked really good for the twenty minutes he played. Nunes looks a bit leggy, so he's def for me. He's out. Of, he's out of this game. Personally, I'll take him out for this one. Put him on the bench. Just rest. Rest for a minute, bro. You know the fan base is on the back on your back again. It start to tell you you're not good enough again. So 
take you out the light, you know, take you out the, the, the light for a minute, bro. Um, Salah came on, did nothing again, in my opinion, bro, did nothing again. Um, he's going for a really bad patch as well. Hmm. I would go. I would go. Diaz here. And then I would give Jota the start. This is what I'd use. That's the front three I would use against Palace. That's the front three I'd use. I think Gapo deserves to start in this one. I think obviously Lucho has to come back in as well. So, but I think put him on that right hand side. And I think put Jota through the middle. Um because I think Palace is going to be, you know, hoping to play up against Nunes. He's going to be the target man. They're going to try and go into his feet. They're going to do the whole low block and try and catch us on a counter attack. But if you play Jota, that can weave in between those lines, you know, and, and you know, right foot, left foot, and he's the more clinical, fin clin clinical finisher. You know, you'd probably get your goals that way. Um, but then, then you've got obviously Salah, Nunes. That's ready to come on if needs be um, for the game. Yeah, I think maybe give. Yeah, I think that I think give him. I think give them that that run, man. Uh, big up to Rasta Crab in the building as well. Max LFC as well. Big up, man. Um, Clubber in the building as well. Big up to all of you guys, man. Appreciate the love. Not here for long, man. Mukama as well. Big up, man. Mersey Red as well. Big up to you. Um, Alexander said Jota is not ready. He looked ready to me, man. Well, I don't think he's ready to play a whole game, um, but he looks ready to me to, even if you can use him for 50, 60 minutes, he looks good, man. He looks good. He looks he looks sharp as well. He doesn't look like he needs, you know, a lot of rhythm to kind of get back into a form. He just looks really, really sharp. So I think why not give him the run from the start? Um, give him the run from the start. Put Lucho onto the right-hand side. Cook's on that side. Gapo on the left and then they'll just interchange they'll all will just rotate and move you know you might end up you might end up seeing little you know changes like Lucho might be in the middle he might drop out there or vice versa Cody comes into here he drops out there into that space you know or even these two switch sides again he, he can go here as well so I think they'll interchange a lot which will cause a lot of problems for Palace's back line but yeah this is what I would you know, I would start. Obviously, Klopp will have his own mind. He'll probably go Nunes, Salah and Diaz. Yeah, that's what you probably use. McAllister, Sobo and Wataru. Like, you can probably predict and pick the team that he'll go with. And I think that's what a lot of managers in the Premier League, they kind of suss out, you know, what he's going to use before he uses it sometimes because they kind of just know he ain't going to change tactically to, to try and play a different way against us. He's going to use what he knows and and, and throw everything at the opponents instead of actually thinking about it wisely and what we actually need. Look at look at areas, and I'm sure they do this work anyway, man. I'm talking like they don't do it. I'm sure they do. It. They have tactical meetings where they sit down, and watch, you know, where the weaknesses are in the opponents, where their strengths are, and then we work on it and set up and try and um, execute a, a game plan for it. But yeah, that's who, that's who I would start, man. Um, Let's get it, man. Um, score predictions. What's your guys' score predictions and your goal scorers? So put it with it. Don't put it after it. Put the goals. Just do a little space. Type in your goal scorers as well. Make it easier for me, man, because sometimes you guys put it in there and then I'm, I'm going to scroll down, find who you said he's going to score and it's just long in it. Just put the goal, the, the, the score, move it across and then put your goal scorers for this one. While you guys are doing that, um, I'm going to go with a 4-1, man. I, I, I never give a clean sheet. I need to give one one day. Um, but we give them a goal. <laughs> We've been, we haven't had a clean sheet in 10, I think, or something crazy, man. We haven't had a clean sheet in ages. Um, but yeah, for me, 4-1. Hmm. Um, hmm. Goal scorers, goal scorers. If it goes with the, the lineup that I've picked, Jota, Gapo, Diaz, McAllister will get the goals. Um, and in front for them, probably Eze or Mateta, probably. Who knows? Um, but yeah, 4-1 from me. Let's see what you guys are saying. 
Marvin says 2-1, Jota, Diaz and Eze. Cameron, big up man, 3-0, Nunes, Salah, Jota, um, Rio in the building, 2-0, Jota, Lucho. Um, no time to rest, sorry. No time for the rest. All finals, big up man. Um, Ashley, big up man, says 3-0, Diaz, 2, Jota, 1. Alexander says 3-3. Three, three. Um, Max, 3-0. Karma says 6 1. Uh, fair enough, brother. 6 1. Mohammed 3 3. Um, be a crazy throwback. I don't want to see a 3 3, man. That's long, bro. Uh, Savage in the building says Liverpool 4, Palace 0. Diaz 2, Salah 1, Elliot 1. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Any more scores? Any more scores on the doors? Um, but my final thoughts, man. I just want to win, bro. Like, after seeing how we didn't even get dismantled, bro. We just, I don't know even what to say, bro. Like, I could even see Klopp's demeanor. He weren't, like, angry. You know, like, after we've dropped points in some other games or we've lost a game or draw it, right? His demeanor is, like, mad angry. He's, he's, he's um, he, he's, like, snappy. But in this one, he was just, like, if, like, the way I was reacting, the way Savage was reacting when we did the calling show, that's the demeanor I got from it. It was so like, I don't know what happened, bro. Like we put a team out to win a game of football and I do not know what happened. But yeah, nah. Um, but we need to bounce back, man. We have to bounce back. He said in the press conference as well that he promises that we will bounce back and we'll, we'll show up. Whether we do that or not, I don't know. We have to wait and kind of see because actions speak louder than words, they say. So we need the actions, boys. We need you to to show up. So I know they're gonna move like they're gonna move like crackheads in the game. Um what Savage normally says they I reckon in the first 20 minutes of this game, Liverpool are gonna move like crackheads, bro. We're gonna be flying about everywhere. Um and if we don't get any goals in that period, bro, it's a long day after that. But yeah, I feel like they'll be on it. I feel like the fans will be on it as well. Because the fan base, man, you let us down as well, man. I say us like I'm one of the players. We let the team down. Because this this quietness at Anfield weren't good enough, man. And this little snobbiness about, oh, they need to show us something before we... Yeah, bro, I've seen the other teams when they come to Anfield. I've seen teams when they come to England, the foreign teams, bro. They sing even when their team is getting smoked. They sing from minute one to minute 90 to, to the, added, the stoppage time to the end of the game, to outside the stadium, before the game starts. Why are we doing the snobbiness, bro? We go into the stadium. It's a privilege to go and watch your team, bro. And I, I know you spend your money to go and watch them, but you still, man, when you go there, you still have an obligation to the team to support them through the game. And I'm not saying you don't do that anyway, but come on, man. Like, Anfield was dead food, bro. When renowned for or known for it being the best atmosphere in the world at times, European nights are the best. These men can't come here with their little section and be, be louder than us, bro, regardless of how the team is playing, bro. Because if we transfer our energy onto the pitch and we're singing, we've seen what we can do. When we go and it's loud, we've seen the Olympiacos come back. We've seen the Barcelona come back. We've seen the Dortmunds come back when we needed, when the fan base was like, from minute one, we're going to be loud. We're going to make it hostile. We're going to do this. We've seen Man City in the Champions League, bro, when we cooked them 3 0. We've seen those moments. But I don't know, man. We're moving a bit snobbish of recent, man. The entitlement of trying to win trophies is crazy. When we weren't winning trophies, we were the best fans. When we're winning trophies, yeah, I'll go there, sit down, man, eat your food. And yeah, well done, mate. And then we throw abuse and blah, blah, blah. And then whatever. And then we just leave the stadium and we're leaving early. Bro, these these madmen as well took pictures of like maybe 10 fans leaving early. Oh, the Liverpool fans are leaving. 10 fans, bro. We made stadiums leave. 10 fans don't equate. The man them could have been going to the toilet, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, couldn't hold it. Trying to hold it. seat pause. Trying to, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. A bit snobbish, man. So, you know, Liverpool fans, if any of you are listening, watching the stream and you'll go into the game, Come on, guys, man. You know what I mean? Let's fix up, bro. Let the, the team know that we're there, bro. Because they've still worked hard. They still go to training and work their socks off to try and bring us wins and trophies. You know what I mean? So all we can do, 
We're going to travel all that way and spend all that hard-earned money. All we can do, sing some songs, man. Be loud, be aggressive, you know what I mean? Make it hostile. Make Crystal Palace go, oh, man, why are we playing these, man? They can't be coming to Anfield going, yeah, man, we'll just quiet these man down ASAP and play our ball and we'll just nick one. And that. Nah, bro. None of that nonsense, bro. Come there where they're like, bro, manager, sub me off. I've got an injury. Fake the injuries. I can't play under, under this pressure. That's where it needs to be. But yeah, just go and play our football, man, and, and, and go and get the win because we have to win. There's no draws. There's no losses now. We have to win every game that we play. But yeah, man, I saw a video um, before I head out, man. I saw a video online. It was on um, Twitter earlier. I know most of you have seen it, but I'll play it so you guys can, can see it. Um, and this is one thing I definitely don't want to see happen. Yeah, we can't, we can't see that happen to our gaffer, man. Gaffer has to leave with at least another trophy in the bag. Um, one looks less likely now because we have to turn turn around a three 0 defeat. But the Premier League, man, we still have a chance. We still have an opportunity. But listen, guys, we got to each and every one of you guys. Um, it's just a quick show, man. Um, I was, I was even. I've got so much stuff to do, but I thought I'll still try and get it done and dust it as quickly as possible for you guys. Um, and plus, I didn't do the preview for the last game as well, which was maybe a good thing because probably I would have predicted something crazy, bro. And then we got smoke for you now. Um, but yeah, should be back tomorrow um, for the call-in show after the Palace game. And then after that, I'm away for a bit, people. I'm away on holiday for a bit. Um, so, Yeah. Um, don't know if any of the men would pick up the mantle and, and carry it on for you guys. Make sure you guys are getting the best content around. Um, but yeah, I'll be away until the... So I'm going to miss, I think, two games, maybe three games. So by the time I'm back, yeah, we could either be out at the time. Do you know it's crazy? I'm missing the, the, that period where we're playing them away games. So by the time I'm back, we could be at the Premier League title race. Or we could be that, that final hurdle. Now let's go. We're two points clear, three points clear. We need a draw need a win and then the, the title was secured um but yeah man make sure you guys go and enjoy your day sunny sunny as hell man hot as hot as hell as well today um but yeah make sure you guys go and enjoy the day man and, and kick back and relax but yeah as i said i don't think there's anything for later um i might do something later actually because i had something in mind um because today it's just it's that holiday mode now um and then sunday call in yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know what? I even planned to do another show and I completely forgot. So I'm, I'm going to have to send T and, um, and G a message as well. And obviously Savage as well. I said that we, I was planning to do the Let's Talk Football on Monday, but I realised that I can't even do it, bro. So it might be, I don't know if there's enough time in the day, bro, mate, after the calling maybe. Because I know T's going to want to talk to us after. I don't know. I'll see. I'll see, man. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. Um, but yeah, man, listen, people. Gonna enjoy the rest of your day, man. Catch you guys in a bit. Peace out. <laughs>